up welcome back to the channel i'm odij and we are locked in this is the recap for episode four of house of the dragon season two now the stage has been set no one really knows why this war is about to kick off but we do know that the war has begun and now dragons are involved so it's about to get very very scary and you will have to choose your side because making that wrong decision now will affect you and your legacy moving forward now before we jump into this and we break down this episode if you like house of the dragon you like these breakdowns and recaps then hit your subscribe button and turn your notification bell so you get something every time i upload make sure you hit that like button and i'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers we need 700 more so if you don't see this at 100 likes hit that like button now the targaryens they're trying to gather up anything they can and we know that damon has went off on his own to try to gather up any resources or troops because we need all hands on deck to go against this high tower hybrid Targaryen family. But let's jump into it. This is the recap of House of the Dragons, episode four. Starting the episode off with Damon, he's been losing his mind. Now, if you remember, he went off to Harnall, and this castle has been a little bit abandoned, but it just has his mind racing on everything that's been going on. And then he sees a young Princess Rhaenyra, and she's talking to Valerian. And he's looking at her, she has multiple crowns on. He ends up cutting her head off. But she's saying, this is what you wanted, Damon. You were the one that created me. You were mad that your brother loved me more than he loved you. So Damon, like I said, he's tripping out. But he's actually just dreaming and he cut off Rhaenyra's head. But when he wakes up, he gets a word that a raven was sent, basically telling him that Sir Criston is expanding his military and ready to make moves and is gonna be attacking at any given time. So Damon, he has to get ready to get together because he's been out here tripping and he's all alone and he needs to regroup. The queen that never was rainy, she goes down to the shipyard and she meets up with Alan. Now, if you don't remember, Alan is the one that poured Lord Corleys out of the ship and saved his life. Now, we know that she's married to a black man and she's telling Alan how beautiful he is and how beautiful his mother must have been. And she's saying, since you saved the Lord, I can understand that he owes you his life. But when Laura Corleys comes over here and sees her talking, to Alan, Alan leaves and gets on the ship. Now she's telling Lord Corleys, you need to treat him a little bit better for saving your life. Yeah, I did find out who he was and you weren't gonna tell me, but now we got this understood. Listen, we need to get back and get focused, but you need to give Alan a little more respect for saving you. Queen Allison, she shows up to the Grandmaster's dorm. Now when she goes in there, she's talking to him and telling him how good he is how loyal he has been, and she's asking for one of those cups. It turns out that Allison is pregnant, and we know that this is Sir Kristen, but she's trying to downplay it and say it's for someone else. Now the Grandmaster, he hears this, and of course he respects her and he has to serve her whatever she needs. So he gives her the cup, she walks off, and she ends up drinking it to terminate her pregnancy because no one could find out that she was pregnant by Sir Kristen. At Dragonstone, we got the small council and everyone's going back and forth on what is the next move. Now the queen that never was, she's here because Rhaenyra isn't here at the moment. She's out and about doing what she needs to do. But if you remember, Bela was the one that was doing surveys. She seen Sir Christian and then run off into the woods. So she was given information on what direction they were going. Now everyone's deciding that, hey, we need to send the dragon out to Rook's rest. Let's go ahead and do this. But the queen that never was is looking at this plan and saying, nah, that don't sound like anything we need to do. But everyone looks at her and says, who put you in charge? Renera didn't make you the hand. Well, then Lord Corleys comes in. Remember, he's like one of the most powerfulest people outside of the Targaryen blood. That Valerian blood is just as good. Now, everyone listens and they got to back down because we still got to show some respect around here. Over at Rook's Rest, we see Sir Christian and his whole army, and they're out here. And you hear them yelling, listen, if you're gonna serve the real king, Lord Aegon, then we'll forgive anything else you got. But if not, just know this will be your end. Now this battle has been going on and Sir Christian has massed a whole militia. And they have a gentleman up here and they're asking him, where do you stand? And he's telling Sir Christian, what are you, what are you doing? Because we know who the rifle heir to the throne is but things got a little mixed up in history and here we are today king aegon is trying to figure out what the hell is going on why is Harrenhal 
consumed by the likes of Damon Targaryen. He told them to send dragons over there and get the castle. Now you hear Lord Lowry saying, oh, that castle's ran down. But remember, they got rid of Clubfoot. No one appreciates him. Now you hear Aemon step up and he's like, nah, we're gonna go over there. We're gonna get Rook's rest. Then we're gonna cut off Dragonstone by land. And then they'll just be stuck on this little bitty island. But King Aegon doesn't see it this way. He wants to attack. He doesn't want to look weak amongst his peers. Now Aegon, he's the one that, you know, he's the first son. So he's really trying to figure things out on the fly. Aemon, he wants that war. He wants to find Damon and he wants to go at it. Sir Lowry shows up to Alicent's room. He's asking her, why weren't you at the small council meeting? Because she was supposed to be there, but we knew she was taking that little serum to get rid of her Sir Christian problems. Now he gets her up to speed and lets her know exactly what the plan is and how Aemon, he's about to guide him, put this thing in full motion while Aegon just sits back and looks like he's running the place. Now when Sir Lowry sits down, he sees that she's reading the same books that Viserys was reading. So he's starting to question, and, hey, are you sure this is who's supposed to be in charge? Remember, Sir Lowry's, he's always trying to find a way to have an edge over everyone else. Now, Allison, she knows that whoever's in charge and whoever was intended to be succeeding varies. Well, it no longer matters because Aegon's in charge. Damon is still tripping. He can barely sleep. Now he hears some noises. He gets up with his sword and he stumbles across this woman named Alice. Now he asks her, is she Alice Strong? Kin to Lowry Strong? She says, no, I'm Rivers. Now she's in here and she's making a potion, but it looks like she's reading Damon bar for bar, word for word. She's saying, you got into it with your wife. You've been here for a while. You haven't been sleeping. You haven't sent the raven back. So for her, She's been peeping everything that goes on in this council, and she also tells Damon that this council is haunted. There's a curse on it, and that she's a barn owl. She's just been forced to live as a human being. Now, she ends up making this potion, and she says it's going to help Damon sleep better, especially if he's trying to gather up enough strength to get an army and go fight against the King's Landing, because it's going to be a tough uphill battle, especially with a ran down castle. Aegon is in there wilding out. He wants people to know that he's the king and it has to be his way. They're born with all of their ideas because if he doesn't get it his way, he's just like a big kid. He's having a fit. Now, when he goes into the back chambers, Allison's in there like, where's your father's books? He said, like, I got rid of them. She says, listen, there's a lot of history in those books and you didn't earn your spot. Just because you wear the crown doesn't mean you earned it. Everyone at that small council, they earned their position. So when they look at you, they look at you and they wonder, how the hell did you fall in line just because you were the son of the king, that nepotism. But Allison is saying, I serve as the queen of all of this in your father's absence. So you need to be listening to us, the people that actually know what's going on. That's because she's trying to stop this big war from breaking out. Because remember, she already talked to Renera. There's a lot of silliness going on. Now, Sir Christian has his army together. They're knocking down trees, making campgrounds. Now, one of the gentlemen is like, wait a minute. Why are we this close to Dragonstone when they got dragons right across there? Sir Christian thinks that he has this power. He thinks that these plans that him and Amon are putting together are going to be the most efficient and most effective. They got dragons over there. Do I need to repeat? They have dragons over there. But Sir Christian says, you know what? The hell with that. Everyone armor up and let's go ahead and start pushing forward because we can take them. But remember, the plan was to send in all of the troops first and then have the dragons flying behind. Now, this plan sounds horrible, especially from us in modern ages. We should send the dragons first and then have the troops come in after. But we got to follow Sir Christian at this point. Everyone's getting restless. Renera shows back up and she's saying she inherited 80 years of peace from her father. They're questioning her going to talk to Allison and she's realizing that this might not work how we planned it out to. But the queen that never was is saying, listen, let me take Maylis out. He's the biggest dragon. He's known for war. He's got the experience. Let me take him out. But they're saying, if you die, you know people raise their banner for us. 
So if we lose you, then they're going to lose loyalty to us and they'll go anywhere. They're only supporting us because of you. But she does have a point. She got the biggest and best dragon. You got to send it out. We got to attack and we got to stand firm. We get the story of ice and fire. Now she's talking about whoever is taking the throne. It doesn't matter if you're a king or a queen. There's something out there that's bigger than all of us. And once you release these dragons out to start this war, there's no turning back. She's just letting this be known that this is the real deal. What we're about to embark on, it hasn't been done in ages. You know, in the old times, ages is a long time, not decades, not years, centuries, ages. So she's just letting it be known what just started. There's no turning back. The dragons are out. The battlefield is crazy. 14,000 people, they just going at it. So imagine you're on the ground, you got swords and you fighting other people with swords. But at the castle, you got the archers shooting at least three to 400 arrows per minute because you got the front line, they shoot. They step back, this back line steps forward, they shoot and they're just rotating, alternating. Then you got the people bringing more arrows up. So the ammo is unlimited. It's nothing but trees out here. This is what warfare really was. Well, the dragons are out and the queen that never was, she showed up and they are lighting the battlefield up. You got people running for the woods. You got people sending off signals. Sir Kristen said, we gotta keep the dragon distracted. So while the dragon is over here, Sir Kristen shot off two arrows with fire into the air and you hear them on the horns. So right now, this is what we've been waiting on. That's all I'm gonna say. Sir Christian sent off his signal and who was laying in the cuts in the back of the woods, just waiting on the chance and the opportunity. Well, it was Amon and Amon, he's on his dragon and we're about to finally get us some action. Everything is just all over the place. Lord Aegon has showed up on his dragon, Sunfire. So he showed up to the battle. We got the queen that never was in the battle. We got Amon, he just waiting like, wait a minute. Now he's looking and seeing his brother up in the air. It's just all over the place. Sir Christian, he's like, listen, y'all, you got to fight harder. Your king has actually entered into this because he knows if the king dies, then it's going to fall back onto him because he was one of the people that were pushing going out here. Now, of course, Aegon, he really doesn't care. Amon's not going to get in any trouble because he's the brother and he's what? He's second in line after the son of Aegon. So it's just all over the place. And Sir Christian, he's like, all right, listen, y'all got to fight harder because he knows it's over with if the king is over with. Aegon goes straight at the queen that never was. She got melees. She tells him to attack. Some fire shoots fire. She goes through the fire and we're like, oh, shoot, they didn't got the queen that never was. Whoa, and then out of nowhere, they come up and they attack some fire from up under. The dragons are going at it. The king is not prepared for this. He's drove, he rode his dragon a little bit when he was younger, but he ain't never really been out here in battle. Sunfire is kind of young anyway. No experience, but we finally got us some air to air combat. Sunfire is hurt badly. I'm talking about claws into his chest. Aegon is trying to get up out of here. Everyone on the ground, like, oh shit, they thinking the dragon's about to fall into him. Sunfire somehow gets up out of his and kind of floats off. But man, it's getting ugly and these fights are happening fast. It isn't no long drawn out action. They are going at it. Well, now the big boy is coming to the game. Vagar and Amon, they're showing up. They're about to settle the score here. You look at Vagar's wings, he done been through a lot. But this is a battle tested dragon right here. And we know Amon is the best sword in King's Landing. Amon just doesn't care. So Aegon and the queen that never was, they're tied up. Dragons going out of it. Vagar comes over here and lights everybody up. We see Sunfire flying from the sky. Amon's on there screaming. Listen, Amon doesn't care. When it's time to go to war, do not get in front of this man because he's not stopping until it's game over. The queen that never was, as she's flying off, she looks back and sees Vagar and Amon. She tells Melees to attack. She turns around. The dragons, they lock talons. Vagar is unleashing. 
some fire from hell. I'm talking about letting them have it. The queen that never was is definitely about to be the queen that never was because she's not making it out of this one. Not at all. Everyone's trying to run to get out of here. Vagar falls, hits the ground. Sir Christian falls off his horse. All of the king's horsemen, they trying to get up out of here. Man, this is exactly why they didn't want to start this war. There's a lot of casualties and no one's really winning at this point. We just potentially lost three dragons within five minutes. Just when we thought Vagar was over with, Amon was down. The queen that never was is flying off into the sunset. Her and Maylees, they make eye contact. And as she flies over a castle, off the cliff, Vagar attacks. It takes a big chunk out of this dragon's neck. Now this dragon is looking back at the queen that never was like, damn, we had a good run, but it's RIP. Vagar is the biggest dragon. Vagar isn't playing. You thought one little hit was gonna take Vagar out? Nah, it don't work like that. And that looks like the end of the queen that never was. A name fitting for a queen that never got to be the queen. Viserys was chosen over her, all because she was a woman. But she went out on the battlefield like a Targaryen is supposed to. That Targaryen blood and able to fly a dragon can't ask for anything else. Sir Christian gets up and he sees the whole battlefield is charred from the dragons. The walls have failed. They're starting to breach the castle. He ends up making it over to the crash site where Lord Aegon is at. And when he gets there, Aemon is there picking up the Valerian steel. And he's asking, where's the, where's our Lord? And well, we see Lord Aegon laying right next to Sunfire, burnt up. And Amon's walking off. And the reason he's walking off is because he told him not to bring himself out here to this battle. Now we need to see who's next in line to be the king. Because what it looks like, Sir Aegon, Lord Aegon, King Aegon, Your Highness Aegon, is dead. Alright, there you go to recap of episode 4, House of the Dragon. We finally got to see the dragons put into action. Who do you think is more at fault here? Sir Christian in his plan or King Aegon for going out there and everyone told him, you do not need to be on the battlefield. Yeah, it sounds good. The king is helping us fight, but you weren't prepared for this at all. Sunfire's all small and little, wasn't really equipped for nothing. But let me know what you think. I'm Modi J. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you next week for episode five of House of the Dragon. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.